What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I wanna to show you how you can make a functional neon light just like you're seeing right here. So let me pause this example so we can see exactly what's going on. So we have a neon sign here. This is all pulled from Grayscale Gorillas library. You don't have to use it, but that's why we're using GSG right here. But if I come over here to my content browser, come to my material, you see we have a couple of different material instances. And so I'm gonna show you how we can make the main material right here. And then we're gonna build this out as a material instance so that you can control it at different levels, just like you're seeing right here in the example. And also, I am gonna show you how we can build this out manually, just in case anybody wants to go in there and make some adjustments. But if you want just a project file, let me know down below. If enough people want it, I'll just make it a SPAC file and we'll give it out to you absolutely free. So we're gonna get started with a brand new blank project scene as you can see right here. I'm using Unreal Engine 5.4, but this should work on previous versions as well. So down here inside of my content browser, I'm just gonna right click in my content browser. Then I'm gonna make a new material and I'm just gonna name this one Neon master and then i'm going to double click on it and let me make this full screen on my monitor let me slide this over a little bit just to give us some more real estate in our material graph and i'm going to slide this over like so so we're going to build this all out from the emissive material right here so i'm going to right click in my material graph and i'm just going to start to type in multiply in which mul will bring it up right here to the top so i'm going to left click on this and then i'm going to take this right here and i'm just going to click and drag it into my emissive color now from here, I wanna add another multiply, but instead of right clicking, I could just hold M on my keyboard, left click, and that's the shortcut for adding a multiply. So I'm gonna put this one into the A, and then I wanna have a color that's gonna pipe in the hair. So I'm gonna hold down the three key on my keyboard, and I'm gonna left click, and that's gonna bring up our vector three. If you manually wanna know how to do this, you can just come down here, right click, just type in constant, and then you wanna use this one right here, constant vector three, and that's gonna give you the same thing. So I'm gonna take this constant three vector, I'm gonna take this top one right here, and I'm gonna connect it to the A slot right there. And then right here, inside of this banner, I'm gonna right click here, and where it says convert parameter, I'm gonna to convert to parameter by left clicking. And now you see that it changed our node right here. We can actually name it now. So I'm just gonna name this one neon color, and this will make more sense later on. So just to get started, I'm just gonna make this a different color by double clicking on it, and then maybe let's come over to blue. And I'm gonna click okay. Now down here, we're gonna add another node right here, which is the add node. So I'm gonna right click, I'm just gonna type in add, and then I wanna select this one right here, this is math add. Then I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna connect it to the B of the multiply. So let's now build out some of the noise effect you would see like when you're looking at a neon tube. So down here, again, I'm just gonna right click, type in noise, and I wanna use this first one right here under utility, just call it noise. Then I'm gonna connect this one to the A slot of the add, now with noise selected, I'm gonna come down here under function where it says simple, I wanna make this into a gradient. Now you can see we're getting some Perlin noise effect right here inside of our material. So we can make this tile a little bit too. If I come down here under tiling, I'm gonna select this on. And then right here where it says levels, instead of six, I'm gonna make this one. And now you see we're starting to get somewhere. So down here under level scale, instead of two, let's switch this out to one as well. And last but not least, let's take the scale right here and let's make this 0.035 just to make it a little bit larger. Now let's add a little bit more control to this. So I'm just gonna move this up slightly. And then down here in my material graph, I'm gonna hold down the one on my keyboard. I'm just gonna left click, and that's gonna bring up a constant one vector. And then I'm gonna take this right here, and I'm just gonna connect it to the B slot. And we're gonna convert this one as well. So right here, I'm gonna right click inside the banner, convert to parameter. And I'm just gonna type this one, or I'm just gonna name this one blackening. And then over here under my details panel, under default value, instead of zero, I'm gonna make this 0.75. So once we make this a material instance, we'll be able to go through and you can make this as different as you want. But once we make this a material instance, we'll be able to go through and control this a lot easier. So I'm gonna select all these and move these up just a tad bit, just to organize it a little bit. And now let's work off of the B slot here. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna type in clamp just like that. And right here under math, we wanna use this clamp right here. Now I'm gonna connect this one to the B slot and you'll see that we have an air popping up here, but don't worry, we're gonna fix that. And so for that one, I'm gonna come over here again, right click and type in frac under math. I wanna use frac F-R-A-C. Left click on that and add that into this top node right here. And now you see that the air moved over to a fracture here, but let's add a sign here. So S-I-N-E, right click under math. We're gonna add a sign, drag that into our frac. And let's add some desaturation to it. So I'm going to right click under color, go to desaturation. I'm going to add that one to our sign right here. 
so right now we have clamp we have frac we have sine and then desaturation and we only have a couple more nodes until we flush this out so i'm going to right click again and i'm going to type in vector noise then you want to use this one right here vector noise i'm going to left click and drag this into the top node just like that and now you see we have no more errors but this is looking a little bit grainy so let's go ahead and fix this out a little bit so i'm going to drag this over just a tad bit by holding down the right click to bring up the hand here so that i can move it over my material graph and I'm going to hold the M on my keyboard to add another multiply. So just hold down the M, left click. And I'm just going to take my multiply node and add it into the row position of our vector noise. So now you can see that it cleaned it up here. But this is where we're going to start adding in the flickering effect. So it looks more like a neon tube. So I'm going to drag this over a little bit again. Let me move this over here. And right here in the material graph, I'm going to right click and I'm going to type in time. So under constant, we want to use this time right here. And then we're going to select this and put it into the A node. Now we don't see it really flickering at a constant rate and that's because we want to be able to control that. So you guessed it, we're going to use another constant one parameter. So I'm going to hold the one on my keyboard, left click to add another constant value, add that to the B slot. But then right here inside the banner, I'm going to right click, convert this to parameter and we're going to name this one flicker speed. Now, if you're not familiar with how to build out materials, you might be wondering, why do we right click and convert it to a parameter? And that's because whenever we make this a material instance, as you'll see here in a few moments, you'll be able to go through and whatever we convert it over, we'll be easily able to go through and select those different numerical values so that we can switch it out really quickly. So for my flicker speed, I'm going to come over here for default value and I'm just going to click on one. And let me come back over here to my vector noise. Let me select this and right here under function, instead of cell noise, let me come down here to the bottom where it says perler and curl. So now we're starting to really get that flickering effect that we're used to when we're seeing like an old neon tube that's about to flicker out. But again, we can control that with the flicker speed as well. Now, if we want to clean this up a little bit, if we come over here back to our clamp right here where we have min default, I'm going to make this one about 0.7. And now you can see it cleaned that up a lot there. And I think we're going to add one more node to stabilize this a little bit more. So I'm going to add another constant vector by holding down the one on my keyboard left clicking in my material graph and I'm going to put this under the minimum under clamp. Now down here, I'm going to right click convert to parameter and we're going to name this one light stabilizer. And for our default value, I'm going to make this 0.4. Now I think I don't want these to be as connected right here. So I'm just going to go through, I'm just going to arc direct this a little bit. So I'm going to come over here to my noise and where it says turbulence, I'm actually going to turn this off. Now I'm liking how that's looking a lot better. So now I'm going to come back up here and click on save again. And then I'm going to exit out of our material. Now we want a 3D object to put this on. You can put it on anything that you want, but I'm going to go to Grayscale Gorilla Studio because they do have some neon tubes in there that look really nice. So with it open right now, I'm just going to type in neon and hit enter. And this works just like how it would inside of Mega Scans or inside of Cinema 40 Asset Browser. So same exact thing. I could take this W right here for Winbush. I'm going to left click on this. And you could download it, which I already did. But down here in the lower right hand side, it says send asset. Let me actually make this a little bit smaller so we can see it better. Now with my W selected, I already have it downloaded. As you can see with the check mark, I'm going to hit send asset. But before I do that, I actually want to connect it to Unreal because right here you can see Unreal Engine is unconnected. So I'm just going to connect this real quick so that I can sync everything up. So now that it's green, that means it's connected. I'm going to come to send asset and now I can exit this out. I'm going to come over here, exit this out. And now you see it made a folder for Grayscale Gorilla. I'm just going to look inside our models. So there we go. We have it all down here. So I'm just going to select all three of these inside of the content browser. Left click, drag it into my viewport. So I'm going to come back down here to where I made my material. Actually, let me save everything first. Okay, so now with that saved out, right here where I have my master material, I'm going to right click down here and I'm going to come to create material instance. So I'm going to left click on this. And now this added an instance, in which I'm just going to name this one Neon underscore blue and then i'm going to double click on it and if you look over here on the right hand side all the things that we converted over those are all the parameters that we have here now so if you click on these on you could go through and you could change out those parameters that we converted so if i even wanted to make this like purple or something like that you don't have to go into the master material you could do that all here so i'm just going to put this onto our light so we can see how it works first so let me actually i can name this one neon purple since we changed the color there we go so now we have our neon light that's on here but you can notice that it doesn't really have a glow or anything on there and that's because we need to add a post-process volume 
So I'm going to come up here to where we have this cube with the plus symbol. I'm going to left click on this, come down here under visual effects, and then I'm going to add a post process volume. Make sure you zero it out. And then down here under search, I'm going to type in UNB and I'm going to turn on infinite extent unbound. That means everything that I'm doing here is going to engulf the entire scene, not just the volume that you see right here. So the first thing I want to do is right here where it says bloom. I want to turn this on. Let me scroll this up a little bit and I'm going to turn on method and I'm going to turn on intensity. Now intensity, I could drag this all the way up to like eight. And now you can see that we're really starting to get a glow in here. And for method, instead of standard, I like using convolution, especially if I'm going to be rendering it out. That's just going to give us a little bit more realistic glow on our tube there. So I'm going to turn this on and there we go. So that's going to be a little bit more realistic. If you want it to be a little bit more stylized, you can stick with standard, just depend on your preference. And if I wanted to come back in here into my material instance, Let's just change this out to like green. And then even for blackening, if we might make this like 0.1, or even if we want to have like almost none in there, we could bring this up to one, maybe even two. Now you can see we have a nice neon light. So you just go through here and just play with it at your disposal and just see what you'd like. Now, as I said to the top, if anybody's interested and wants me to upload the master file so they don't have to go through and build it from scratch, just let me know. I'd be happy to do so. If not, this is exactly how you can build it out, but feel free to go in there and mess with the notes and have it exactly to your liking. So once again, my name is Jonathan Wimbush. Subscribe to the channel if you do. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.